I am here representing the European Network of uh, Livestock Phenomic, uh, an European project. And I think that this is a great uh, opportunity to disseminate this uh, cost action and try to find uh, some synergies to solve some of the most common limitation and challenge in the field of the animal phenomena. So uh, first of all, just uh, in one slide, I would like to briefly introduce my research institution, uh, the Institute of Animal Science and Technology from the Universitat Politecnica of Valencia. And you can see the, in this slide the building, the team and the farms. On the different floors of the building, we have the different research areas. I work in the field of the animal breeding and genetics. Um, we work extensively in rabbit using divergent lines to study uh, resilience and longevity and also intramuscular fat. And now we are trying to, uh, to generate uh, another divergent line selecting for uh, feed efficiency uh, trade. And just crossing the street, we have the farms that you can see in the picture, where we have all the animals for the experiment that we developed in the institute. So uh, the important part. In this talk, uh, I will try to introduce the main ideas of the European project. It will be a um, general introduction and then I will focus a bit more on the World Package 3 and um, where I'm co-leader uh, together with Mike Toscano and Elma Sanat. Um, in this uh, working group, uh, one of our deliverables is to try to find synergies to solve some problems in computational analysis related to phenomic and um, for that the interest uh, of this talk. So, uh, first of all, what is the phenomenon? Well, uh, here we have a phenom, or in this case, I think that is more commonly known as a cow. So, uh, we can define the phenom as the, all the physical uh, molecular phenotypes that we can measure in an animal. For example, the body weight, the milk production, and also uh, the genome, uh, methabolome, and other biological uh, attributes uh, from the animal. We know that the, the omic, like for example, genomic and methagenomic, are the methods and techniques that we can use to study the genome and the microbiome in this case. So uh, we can define phenomic has uh, the ensemble of all the methods and technologies for the acquisition, uh, analysis, and uh, also the exploitation of the phenomenon. And now um, we know that the phenomenon is, is emerging, has a new technical discipline in biology, so it's uh, getting very important in, in the livestock sector. And this is because uh, phenotyping is uh, increasingly uh, recognized as a limiting factor in current application for uh, animal genetic and genomic. Um, I think that phenotyping is uh, uh, fundamental to the routine, to the day-to-day -day management of the livestock population overall to uh, optimize uh, strategies. Uh, for example, uh, to improve uh, animal welfare and resilience that uh, nowadays are the current trending uh, trade, uh, joining to fee efficiency and uh, social integration. So uh, the idea is uh, that we need new phenotypes adapted to the new needs of the livestock industry. So we need to define new uh, strategies uh, for measuring these uh, new traits and also new ways for uh, implementing them in the breeding program, inside the breeding programs. 
for example, one of the problems for uh, measuring the resilience and the welfare is that we we don't know exactly what is the best indicator for this complex trait, and um, there are many studies uh, trying to solve it uh, right now. Um, the main challenge, uh, I think, that is uh, the wide range uh, of phenotypes that we uh, can have and that we can classify into different uh, categories. For example, uh, depending on the level at which uh, we are measuring, uh, we can measure morphological trait uh, of the animal as body weight or molecular phenotype that can act as intermediate, as, I don't know, for example, uh, metabolism plasma. And also the phenotype can be classified depending on the information that we are recording. For example, uh, the activity of the cow from a sensor, uh, again, a direct phenotype has body weight, indirect phenotype has microbiome, quantitative, qualitative, uh, a lot of different measures. And all these measures can be recalled in a single point or in several points, doing a repeating measure of the same phenotype. And all of them depend on the aim of the study, what we, what we want to know and what we want to do with this phenotype. That could be uh, just a management for disease control or breeding purpose. Or, I don't know, just to know the biological mechanisms uh, under this uh, key trade for uh, the livestock industry. So, uh, there is a wide heterogeneity of phenotypes that uh, together with the complexity of the interaction of uh, all, on the, all of them and also uh, the effect of the environment make uh, the phenomenon complicated. And to complicate a bit more, there is a wide range of approaches, technologies, protocol uh, to manage uh, this kind of information. So uh, I think that we can uh, have a wide range of phenotypes that, that is impossible in human, but there is a lack of uh, a standardized protocol. And um, for this reason, uh, and this project, this European, uh, European project, uh, aim to develop, um, integrate, and implement, and implement uh, practical technologies, methods, tools, uh, and other things to uh, usefully scan and try to interpret the animal phenomenon. With the aim, uh, with the final aim, uh, of improving the uh, knowledge and also the applicability of them in the livestock sector. Uh, here you can see the, the chairs, the chairs of this uh, cost action and that uh, are Luca Fontanesi from Italy and Thomas Norton from Belgium. And uh, we are about 60 people from 30 countries in the management committee. I think this and uh, that this number was updated in young and we have uh, at this point uh, around 300 members from uh, 50 countries uh, in the different working group. And we have a balanced uh, representation of gender, inclusive target country and also a high proportion of young research as me. I have sensors in my office, so sometimes. <laughs> uh, here you can see the uh, we have the graph with the number of members from each country. Uh, most people are from Italy, Turkey, uh, Belgium. <laughs> I think that there is a little bias due to all chairs, <laughs> especially Lucas. <laughs> Um, in this slide, we can uh, we have the specification of the project. 
uh, this project is divided into five working groups, each with their specific uh, objective and deliverables. The working group one, two, and three are more linked uh, between them, and they are focused uh, more on the research objective. Um, the working group one on the state uh, of the art of phenotyping technology, the two on the integration of the genome to phenome, and the working group three on the uh, computational resource uh, and method used for phenomenon. The other working group, the working group four, is uh, more related to a uh, summarized policy and economic implication of the project. And the last one is a group for the uh, dissemination to the society. I forgot to say if, uh, that if anyone can take a screenshot of the presentation, I will be re really grateful because uh, I'm sure that Anna uh, will ask me them for uh, disseminate it to the whole community. Um, but by the way, uh, you can see uh, all the leaders uh, and co-leaders of each uh, package and package if you want to contact with uh, someone. Um, finally, uh, here we can see uh, just the number uh, of mem members that belong to each uh, working group. And uh, in the following slides, uh, I will talk about uh, the main research objective of this project. Next to each objective, uh, you can see the working group uh, associated. Mm. Then, has, as I said before, the, the main aim of this project is to advance the state uh, of the art in the protocol required for uh, the phenotyping, to describe phenotypic information at multiple levels in farm animals, but we want also to develop standards uh, that will help the research community and also facilitate the implementation of new uh, strategy inside the uh, livestock uh, industry. And to do, uh, to do that, uh, we need to standardize uh, the technologies, that database, tools, and uh, also uh, eva evaluate the tools uh, to define uh, appro appropriate uh, methods for uh, processing all the omic, the genome or other omic, uh, to the phenome level. We want uh, also explore and study the, the dynamic response and adaptation of animals phenotype to the environmental factors. And uh, explore novel data integra integration approaches uh, and also technology, including OMIS, uh, sensor data, images, um, animal movement, all of them uh, to, to try to generate and visualize complex systems, the complex phenotype of the livestock population to try to facilitate the, the predictions. And in this line, we want to, to propose a new application of a genomic selection and precision livestock breeding to the industry. Um, finally, we, we will try to summarize the, the, the knowledge of the world uh, regulatory landscape around genomics genomic, phenomenon, and microbiome. Uh, for example, in terms of uh, open access data policies, uh, intellectual property, or all these things. And also develop uh, some strategies to try to reduce the negative social perception of the uh, livestock uh, sector. For example, with the development of uh, uh, traits and methodology to improve animal welfare and resilience. 
Um, so for the global vision of the project, uh, in the following slides, uh, I will explain in a little more detail the, the main aims uh, of the working group three, in, in which I am more actively involved. Uh, in summary, we have two main objectives, uh, focus on giving an idea of the different models, methodologies, tools, um, resources in the context of phenomics. But uh, most importantly, we want to identify synergies to try to solve most of the challenges and limitations in terms of uh, computation and infrastructure for data storage, uh, pipeline, uh, pipeline development, um, etc. Uh, that is why we are here today to try to know if we can establish a, a synergy that will help us to to standardize uh, the analysis of uh, this kind of data of the phenomics. Um, we will try to achieve uh, these aims uh, by uh, developing different uh, tasks that you can see in the in the slides. And I will explain, I will focus on the first one uh, a little more because uh, we are working on it uh, right now. In this uh, first task, uh, we, want, we want to explore the application of uh, new methods, algorithms, um, also computational strategies to try to improve uh, data extraction and the interpretation of the phenomenon. Um, considering, I think, that different approaches and, and technologies, like sensors and molecular phenotype, morphological trait, all the uh, global uh, phenomena. Mm -hmm. And to analyze and integrate uh, also the environmental uh, data with the phenomena and other omits to, to try to improve the, the the selection of the enemy using, for example, uh, or developing, for example, predictive uh, modeling methods using machine learning, um, also trying to um, better understand and integrate the G by E interaction, the genome by envir environment interaction, the genome and the integration of the other omics with the phenomic variation, um, all of them to uh, try to facil facilitate the extrapolation, interpretation, and inference of the, the results. Uh, for that, uh, we are uh, now developing a review publication to provide an overview of the computational models and methods and that we need to exploit the list of uh, phenomics. Um, we expect uh, to, send, to send this manuscript to a journal next year, around March. We have, uh, you can see in the slide, the different uh, divisions of this uh, review. In orange, uh, we have the main sessions. Uh, first, uh, we have the a session to indicate the main source of re raw data collection and extraction. And the second one, the integration of genomic and phenomic data uh, has been extending to all the omics because uh, all omics are part of the phenome, not just the genome. Uh, we need to understand the, uh, the complete uh, biological mechanism uh, underlying the key trace uh, to, to breeding and um, management. So uh, this session, in the, in the, the integration part, um, aim to find or define strategies to properly integrate uh, all this OMI information with the, the phenome variation. Then uh, it is important to know the, the visualization tools and software for uh, understand the complex data relationship. 
And uh, I think that uh, the following session is the, the main part of the paper, the, the session uh, on computational modeling. There are, there are many, many different computational models and sometimes uh, choosing which model should be used uh, can be complicated. So uh, this session will give uh, some general uh, guidelines for choosing an appropriate model and give uh, also uh, examples of a typical data structure and some tips in, in phenomena with also uh, some suggestions for uh, suitable uh, models. Uh, here is a, a suggestion of the content of this session. Um, to choose a model, uh, we need to know what problem we are trying to solve. That's the, the important part. Is uh, exploratory to find patterns in the data or I don't know, we need to estimate or predict the genetic merit of the animal for a particular phenotype. And to solve uh, that, uh, the data structure is uh, very important. So we need to know the, the, the number of observations that we have, uh, the type of the data that we are using, uh, they are genomes, uh, microbiomes, activity record, what kind of data we have, um, also the, the distribution of this data and the confounding effect. We need to know which model uh, is, is best uh, uh, to solve uh, all problems. Uh, finally, uh, the session of the interpretation and applied benefits, uh, we have to consider that uh, we have to consider who will be using uh, this information and how to provide uh, appropriate tools and instructions that uh, match the skill level of each person so they can make the best use of them. Then, uh, then you can uh, see other secondary session to complement the information from the other session and make easier to read and understand. And each uh, session has their leaders. All of them are experts in the topic of uh, the session that is leading. So they can develop the material without any complication and with other team members that are interested on do that. Um, for this presentation, I ask uh, for some key challenges and limitations that they uh, highlight uh, from each of the session. And I will show you uh, briefly in the in the following slide. And if you have the solution to some of the uh, of this problem, please let me know at the end of the presentation. <laughs> um, First of all, uh, we saw that the, the data is uh, highly uh, heterogeneous in terms of uh, information, format, size, and quality, type of phenotype measure. So we need a standardized methods to ensure the compatibility and mindfulness of the, of the comparisons. And uh, we extend uh, our interest to all OMIs, sensor data, longitudinal data, and all data that we can uh, extract from the animal and that we can integrate. So uh, we need efficient algorithms, uh, a high computing uh, infrastructure to deal with large, uh, with this uh, large data set. But uh, the question here is um, that if uh, more data is better for uh, unraveling the complexity of, of, of the phenomenon. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't know how to how to manage the amount of data that uh, nowadays we have. The, the more data that we have, the, the more problem that we have also. Uh, in separating noise uh, from signal, for example. 
And for proper interpretation, we need to develop a uh, robust and efficient uh, methods and algorithms um, um, to try to properly uh, visualize the data, uh, recognize patterns, and also uh, main, make uh, inference about the causality uh, of, of a trait. Um, and I think that uh, also to study the influence of the environment on the phenome, because it is an uh, important part of all the all the phenotype. So uh, sometimes uh, more data is not uh, always better. Um, the computational efficiency is uh, nowadays a really important part of the analysis. Uh, sometimes uh, including uh, more data uh, may increase uh, the accuracy uh, of the model, but uh, just uh, 1%. Um, in terms of uh, computational cost could be, I don't know, 20 times uh, higher, um, maybe not be practical. Uh, so, uh, with this program, we need a collaboration between uh, all the experts uh, from different files, uh, uh, animal science, genetics, statistics, uh, bioinformatics uh, programmers, so to try to implement efficient solution to this uh, large uh, amount of data. And um, finally, um, uh, all the constraints related to the uh, availability of the software and the, develop, the development of new software to meet the new challenges of the sector. There is also limitation uh, in data storage, accessibility, ownership, uh, software maintenance, uh, I don't know, cybersecurity. Also today, uh, I think that there are some platforms that we can see here that can help to solve some of uh, this problem. But in general, the amount of data is so high that uh, I think that an effective management is, uh, is still necessary. Um, this slide is just to let you know that uh, you might be interested in collaborating with Working Loop Tube, which is uh, also looking for synergies to standardize genomic analysis. And this working group is more uh, focused on the interpretation of the of the genome uh, to integrate the genome with the phenome. Sorry. Um, working group three uh, are more focused on the all the computational analysis in general as I explained. Uh, so uh, I think that that's all. I hope I have sparked some interest in working with us. <laughs> and in that case, if you want to join uh, this course action or to any of the working group, you can do so uh, the links that you can see in the slide. And uh, if you want more specific information about some part of the project, uh, please, uh, you can contact with the, the chairs, with Lucas or Thomas, uh, here uh, you, are, you are the, the emails. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Um, I will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much for this talk. Um, are there any questions already around? I am wondering in the context of how you say that people can join, um, what is the uh, lifetime of this project? What is that? Please, uh, sorry. Uh, for how long is this project going to run? And is, uh, I think that four years. We have uh, at the end of the first uh, year, but people can join us uh, whatever they want. So uh, they started to contribute in the deliverable that we are uh, working at this uh, moment. But we need uh, overall to increase the, the number of experts from different uh, fields because uh, we need genetics, statistics, uh, biologists, um, 
and also we need to uh, increase the, the the species that uh, we include in the project because uh, I think that most most of the people are working with a uh, cow, pig, um, uh, sheep, I think, but we need to include also rabbit, uh, bit, uh, insect, um, uh, other species to try to solve the the overall problem that is extrapolate all the 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 methodology and protocol to all the species, not just to focus on the most important one. Okay. Um, Sadik has a question. Thank you, Christina, for this uh, very nice talk and this nice overview. I have a, I have an important question, I think, which uh, relates to uh, data availability. So uh, well, my experience is that working in the field of uh, animal genomics, the phenotypes are often extremely valuable from a financial point of view, and the partners are often very reluctant in releasing the phenotype. So you end up with these beautiful Excel files where the very column on which you'd like to work is actually not available to you, or you're not you're, you're legally not allowed to do anything on it. So how is this going to work in the context of this project? Are you going to, to try to have all the data open and, and uh, available to everybody, or what is going to be? The underlying yeah, structure. I, I think that the, the idea is try to to found or develop some platform that we can use to 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 load all the the data that we need to to develop the, per, the experiment. Because uh, uh, we want to know the 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 complexity of the phenotypes, for example, the body weight. So. If there are people that uh, are record from sensors, it could be useful for me to make uh, some uh, different approaches. So uh, have the possibility to access to all this, this information that I know that is a high uh, valuable because you pay for that in your project. But uh, to try to, to move, move on, on the science, I think that we need to share the database to try to to. I think I think I think we all agree on this, but my question is whether it is realistic. So, in this uh, cost no, action, I, I you are know. probably yeah. No, but that's that's the point. So, in this cost action, I don't know what is the total budget of the cost action. I don't really know. I think um, Lucas uh, has to be that. Uh, that thing because but, he's doing the economic part of the project. Yeah, but I'm, I'm assuming that this cost section is only supporting the uh, uh, setup of this nice infrastructure you've been describing to exchange all this data. But the data itself is probably being produced by the partners through other type of funding. And yeah. some of these fundings will involve uh, 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 IP protection and all this kind of thing. So do you think it could be an issue that the data is not going to flow in the open database as as uh, as uh, flawlessly as you would like it to do? Yeah, yeah, I I think that this is a problem. So uh, for that, I mentioned in the in the presentation, um, we don't know really how to solve uh, to solve that. So. We are working on 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 this uh, on this task, but uh, now we we don't know how to solve to solve this. And but just just out of curiosity, a lot of uh, policy uh, behind this the this availability of the data and that is the property, the ownership. The, the you have a lot of things that I have to consider. So uh, as you probably know, in software. There are lots of licenses, different types of licenses that protect more or less well your software, you know. Some licenses make people allowed to take your software and reuse it and sell it if they want. Other licenses make it possible for anyone to take your software, provided they keep distributing for free. For instance, if they incorporate your software in another software, the new software inherits the original license. I, Jose will correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the case for NFCore. So if you incorporate NFCore 
uh, packages in another package, then the other package has to be distributed under the same terms of NFCore, which is uh, open source and freeware and all these kind of things. Uh, is there, uh, are there uh, uh, grades of licensing for, for, for phenotypic data? Is it something that is being explored by the consortium to license data so that it would have uh, specific properties? I don't know. This is not my my field. I can I, I can help you in this part. So. I see. I see. I don't know if anyone has another question. So, I just had a small comment on uh, on the fact that I do agree. I think you made uh, you made this comment early on the talk that. Uh, 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 the specificity of farmed animal is that we can measure many things, more than in human, in fact, because yeah. indeed, well, in human, we have a medical access, which is usually very specific in time. You only go and see the medic when you're sick. You can measure a lot of animals through a long time. So this is data that is potentially of high medical value because uh, in reality, you know, we know that there is not as much difference as we sometimes imply socially yeah. between a human and a cow or between a human and most of these animals. And so uh, do you foresee any uh, medical uh, 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 medical extension of the use of this data? Mm, no, I don't. Uh, I don't search about, about that. So I don't know. But I think that um, all the things that we develop in on this project uh, could be applied on the on the human, because mm -hmm. uh, the most complication is to try to standardize uh, the methodology and protocol to analyze this amount of data. So if we can solve the problem, then the the human can can use it. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, as you probably know. One of the biggest projects ongoing these days is the Earth Biogenome Project. So it's a project that aims at sequencing about 1.5, I think now they're at 1.8 million species. And so it's a project that will have a massive impact on farm animal genomics because uh, we will end up sequencing all the siblings of the species of economic interest, all the wild siblings. And uh, of course, this will provide a unique genetic background, first of all, to understand the specifics of domestication, you know, what are the genes that were selected and all these type of things, and also to better understand the health of these animals, because you have all of these alternative versions of the same animal in different yeah. environments. Of course, it won't be possible to capture phenotypic data on these uh, wild animals, and if it is possible, a minimum amount of phenotypic data Will be will be accessible. Do you think this project could be used to prioritize the kind of phenotypic data that will be the most informative? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I think that uh, we have to 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 stu study that. But uh, with the amount of data that this project will generate in terms of uh, genomic and the, all the variation that we can uh, exploit from that. Uh, if we can record a, a valuable phenotype overall for the the in terms of uh, adaptation to heat stress and uh, the the genomic by environment interaction that is uh, really important for the the livestock sector i think that we can um uh, try to explain uh, some of the 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 important variation on the phenomic that could be due uh, uh -huh. uh, by the genomic uh, in relation with the environment that is uh, uh, nowadays uh, really important. Because then uh, you stop me if, I'm, if if anybody has something more interesting than me to say, please stop me. But uh, you uh, you you mentioned at some point that too much data is sometimes a problem because uh, you know it's too much data and. Uh, <laughs> Until not so long ago, I would have uh, possibly agreed with you, but not anymore because uh, since ChatGPT, we know that uh, you know a lot of data is always better, and you can you can really leverage large amounts of data with artificial intelligence these days. And so, 
do you think we may reach a point where uh, all of this data you're collecting will be uh, 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 leverage so as to train intelligent systems that will be able to input all the data you are interested in with minimum amounts of experimentally collected data you know just uh, just uh, very very limited amounts of data will be expanded into a full image of a phenotype or the full image of uh, how you expect an animal to respond to different types of conditions. Is this something that you guys are going to explore? Um, we want to explore that, but um, uh, this, this uh, limitation um, was uh, so more in the part of the breeding program because we have problem with ah. the inversion of the matrix to calculate the the genetic marriage of the animals. Um, uh, many times we have to reduce the dimensionality of the data to to use our model. So for uh, some things, uh, uh, I think that the artificial intelligence is, is useful for um, uh, try to solve and unify all the information that we have uh, for the uh, the animals in terms of uh, study the biological mechanisms. But uh, when we want to apply to the livestock sectors, uh, we have to uh, to use other models. Um, uh, we saw that uh, matching learning and deep learning uh, doesn't work uh, so well in the file of uh, animal breeding uh, for predicting the the genetic merit of the animals. So uh, we are having uh, still this problem with <laughs> with the data with the amount of data so uh, just to make it clear but when i talk about ai i talk about artificial intelligence not artificial insemination yeah, which yeah, yeah, i understand I can be can be confusing in your field <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the, for a, a biological person <laughs> it's has double uh, sense Can I have a question? Please, please go ahead. Um, thank you, uh, Christina, for your nice uh, talk. Uh, uh, that's 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 a great opportunity uh, opportunity for me to learn a uh, European um, livestock phenomics uh, uh, program. So, um, for this program, what are the basic biological questions you would like to have answers once you complete this project uh, the the biological question uh, i don't know if uh, we have a specific biological question because we we want to have an overall overview about the phenom of the animal and uh, for that we need a collaboration from many uh, many expertise in different files, um, include different species and phenotypes because we want to have the the most as possible information about all the 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 phenotypes that people are using now in the livestock sector to to try to to combine all the information and. Overall, standardize the protocol and uh, uh, computational analysis to 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 try to extract information from this kind of data. I don't think that we have a um, specific uh, uh, phenotype to to focus on on it. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Um, if not, then once again, a big thank you to Christina for the talk. Uh, for the future meetings, we plan on going on a short summer break in August and resume on the 18th of September. Uh, but we have so far no speaker yet confirmed so 
please uh, check the website in the Slack channel. And um, I believe Cedric wanted to have a closing word. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much, Christina. And uh, thank you all for uh, joining this channel, some of you for quite some time already, and uh, some of you for the first time today. Uh, uh, as we all mentioned, we're going to break over August, and then we will resume next year. Next year, we have quite a few nice speakers lined up already. We have uh, Rodri Guigo, who will be our speaker in October, and we have uh, Harris Lewin, the uh, chairman of the Earth Biogenome, who will be our speaker in November. So that's quite nice. In December, we are too close to Christmas, so we won't do anything. And uh, we are still looking for speakers for 2025. We we are connecting, co co uh, contacting a few people. But if any of you will be interested in making a presentation, please let us know. And I will just like to uh, to reiterate what is going to be the focus of this uh, working group. So on one side we have the talks, and we are trying to have the talks as inspirational as possible. And that's why. We contacted Roderick Guigo from NCOD and GTEx. So these are human large genomics project and the Earth Biogenome. This is just for us to set the context in which farm animal genomics is being carried out. And uh, we'd like to alternate between speakers that will be very broad and give us a sense of the state of the art and the direction in which we are going because uh, Animal genomics often follows human genomics, and we want also to alternate these with more technical talks that will be really aligned with your everyday preoccupations. And uh, lots of you guys do computational analysis, and so an important focus of this uh, working group is to make it possible for standards to emerge and for common ways of dealing with the data, of storing the data. I think this was very nicely put by Christina. All of this data is very, very uh, 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 fragmented these days. It's fragmented by species because people working on different species collect the data in different ways. It's fragmented by techniques. It's fragmented in all sorts of ways. And so we have to help doing this. An important focus of this working group will be a methodological focus. And we have already started interacting with uh, with the Eurofang working group that is trying to create an Elixir, uh, 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 an Elixir group. So you know Elixir is, for those of you not European, Elixir is a big uh, organization, a large organization that is helping European scientists managing the data and their tool. Okay, so it's something, it's quite close to the European Bioinformatics Institute. And so Elixir has launched interest groups that are entire communities of people working on genomics. And within this context, we are going to try to contribute through your feedback, through the feedback of our small NFO community towards the methodological part of the white paper, of the Elixir white paper that we are going to write for this community. So that's something that is going to take place all along 2025, most likely. And in this context, we will start collecting resources. We will start uh, uh, running surveys, trying to figure out who is using what kind of method to do what kind of analysis and do all, all, all these type of things. So I hope I hope we can count on you. And of course, you know, uh, uh, it's European because, you know, money is flown in one way or another. But uh, as we know, the animals are the same all across. The genomes are the same all across. So the broader the reach of this effort, the more interesting it will be for everybody. And uh, without further ado, if nobody has anything to add, I wish you all, well, I was going to say a great summer break, but I have our Argentinian colleague just below, and I don't think summer is coming for you. <laughs> so uh, have, a, have a nice break for those of you in the southern hemisphere, and, and, and a pleasant... Uh,